Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the PG Show, where we talk about all things college football. And today I have a special one for you. I have Danny Stutzman, who is a sophomore linebacker at the University of Oklahoma. And I know all of you OU fans are going to love this one. But before we get into it, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know what you guys are just most excited to see from Danny Stutzman in the upcoming 2022 season. All right, let's get into it. Hey, Danny, how are you doing? Doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Uh, I really appreciate it. So let's just go ahead and get into learning a little bit more about you. Um, so just tell us a little bit more about uh, who you are, about your family. Where'd you grow up? Well, I'm from uh, Winter Garden, Florida. It's a very, very small town in um you know, my uh, my dad's from Texas. He played uh, football at Baylor. And my mom's actually from Puerto Rico, which a lot of people don't really know. But uh, and she also played she played basketball at Baylor. So that's kind of how all that started. OK, so uh, I'm assuming when you guys lost to Baylor last year, your family uh, got the last laugh on that one. Yeah, it was it was a good situation for them. It was kind of a, a win win situation, whatever, either way it went. So, uh Yeah. All but, right. Uh, my dad definitely they they had the sooner gear on. That's one thing. They're they were supporting me. Uh so what was your take on that last year with that Baylor game and how it ended? It looked like Lincoln Riley had wanted uh to just call the game uh with that one second left, but it looks like they uh made you guys come back out. I mean, what was going through y'all's mind with the fans, you know, storming the field too early and then having to come back out? What was that like? Yeah, that was definitely a heated game for sure. Um, I actually, uh, I remember the game pretty well because uh, a fellow linebacker, he was actually uh, had the flu that game. So uh, I actually had to step up. And, uh, you know, it was it was a close game throughout. It was just, you know, at the end, it did get, did get chippy for sure. Uh, the fans kind of did some stuff, you know, but uh, that's called football. I mean, you kind of expect that stuff when you go to hostile ter- uh, enemy territory. So it happens, you know, we're just moving on. Yeah, I uh, I really thought the game changer in that game would have been uh, when Lincoln pulled Caleb and put Spencer in for that. Uh, I think it was a couple plays and he threw that. I mean, he threw that bomb. If if if, if that would have been completed, it, that would have been a game changer for y'all. Y'all probably would have won that game at that point. So that was a momentum grabber. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So what's your favorite music, your favorite artist? You got a favorite song? Um, I, you know, I kind of, I like to change it up. You know, um, I go through a lot of different genres. You know, I, I was used to be big into like seventies and eighties, like kind of rock. And, um, you know, I listen to rap and, and right now, honestly, I couldn't really say I have a favorite song. I just, I've changed it up. There's been so much diversity where I've enjoyed so many different types of songs. Like it's kind of hard just to pick one, but, uh, for artists, you know, I, I do enjoy Kanye, like kind of his style. I gotta say. Yeah. So what music do you listen to pregame to like get you just motivated and hyped up before you enter the palace? Well, pregame, I like to, I like to keep it chill. I I usually, I don't really listen to music that much. I like to stay locked in, stay focused on my assignments and what I'm going to be doing. But if I will, I'll probably just put on some rap, you know, maybe some hard rock and I'll probably just switch between the two. Just depends on the mood, depends how I'm feeling that day. All right. So since you mentioned hard rock, I got to ask this question. So Gabe and Teddy, I don't know if you listen to their podcast, but they have a podcast uh-huh. called the Oklahoma Breakdown. Great podcast. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to it, guys. But uh, they talked about or a fan asked a question the other day about these new LED lighting that they're putting in the stadium. Uh, it's kind of like what Alabama and Georgia have. Right. So during that game, mm-hmm. it could be awesome. But we were talking about entrance songs, you know, and right now, you know, we have the bells where you guys are walking through the tunnels with the scene center. Mm-hmm. And uh, a fan asked if we should um, it get a, a song as a walk in, um, which I don't know how they would do that, incorporate that. I think it would work better maybe going from the third to fourth quarter. But if you had to pick a song that you either walked into or it was a change over from the third to fourth quarter, what would that be? Man, I could not even tell you because. Like going through my recruiting, like I thought Virginia Tech's like what they do was so cool. And like, I don't know. I feel like it's hard for me to pick a song like that because 
it's like kind of, the songs that are the best are the songs that have like the culture and the meaning behind it that makes it so much better. So, but probably like a seventies or eighties hard rock. So I just, everyone knows everyone gets that feeling it pumps everyone up. I mean, there's, there's so many good songs out there. It's just, it's so hard to pick for sure. If, if you, if you see what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Um, bad turnip seed and Joe Stig Leon need to bring some black uniforms for you guys. And we wear them one night game a year. And your guys' entrance song for that, for that year needs to be back in black. That, 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 that would that be, would be cool. that would be insane. No, that's, that's a pretty solid idea. So, all right. Well, you know, what are some of your favorite hobbies outside of football? I mean, I, 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 I do enjoy cars. That was something back home that I had when well, I had more time and I, I would do a little bit of that, help my dad out, you know, but, uh, you know, I like to play video games. I love other sports. I love basketball. Um, that's pretty much just some of the small things I like to do, but you know, it's just, it's hard now in college football. There's, it's kind of just now work out, film, eat, sleep, do it again. So, but I'd probably say those three for sure. Yeah. Well, the good news is you guys get to go to quite a few basketball games, I guess, because the football season ends pretty much right as basketball mm-hmm. season really starts to ramp up in February. So, uh, do you go out there a lot and watch the OU men and women play? Yeah, I try to try to pop out uh, at a few games. You know, sometimes it's hard. You're tired. You're banged up. It's it's easy to stay home, but I do like to support the other uh, other teams, other sports programs here. Yeah, uh, that's got to be a challenge for the OU fans over the next year. Is we got to start showing up for all these teams across the board, uh, watching the World Series and watching mm-hmm. OU be there. Um, Ole Miss really showed us up in the men's World Series, so we got to start showing up for all the other sports outside of football. So. Yeah, I think we have such a good culture, you know, here at Oklahoma, just from every single sport where, you know, we're always going to be competitive. We're always going to be, you know, at least up there. So I think Sooner Nation does need to start popping out some other games because, you know, we can definitely show our support more. Yeah, yeah. When we go to the SEC, that's going to be huge. So, Absolutely. all right. Well, let's go ahead and get into your recruitment a little bit because uh, this one I'm pretty interested in, right? So you said you were from Florida mm-hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm looking at some of the offers you had here. What was that like? What just kind of give us an insight to what your recruitment was like? Um, you know, who recruited you outside of OU, and what was like your biggest determining factor into coming to OU over some of the other places? Well, it was uh, it was pretty challenging. I mean, I was a COVID kid, so you know, a lot of the schools that I was recruited by, I, I couldn't really see. I never got to be on campus at Oklahoma, and uh, so I, I had a top four of. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas A&M. And man, I, after that, I, I really could even tell you I, the next school because I it was so hard to do recruiting. Like I was doing Zoom calls, trying to figure out schools. And so it was mainly up to those three. And Oklahoma really stood out because, you know, even though there was still some obstacles, they kind of stuck through. I was always getting texts, always getting calls. And uh, they really personalized stuff where, you know, I, st- I could tell they really had, they really wanted me. And, uh, you know, I wanted to go to a place where I was wanted. So they definitely checked all those boxes and there's such good culture here for sure. I want to be a part of that. Yeah. So who recruited you at OU? Was it Lincoln? Uh, was it Grinch? Like who came out there and recruited you? And, you know, what was their pitch? Because I guess this is something that, you know, it's kind of hard for us to comprehend sometimes. It's not always the head coach coming out there to recruit you guys. Um, and then, you know, kind of getting an insight to their pitches a little bit sometimes is uh, awesome. Well, um, coach, uh, Brian Odom, uh, he, he recruited me. He was awesome, man. Uh, he's pretty much the sole reason why I came to this school. Uh, he was, you know, he cared a lot. He would take a lot of time. Like I said, cause it was COVID. He, I never really got to meet him. Actually. He never really saw me in person. He kind of took a chance on me, but, uh, you know, I, we would talk pretty much daily. We would sit down, do the like, zoom calls and just discuss stuff, you know, talk football, talk life. And uh, he had a big impact. And obviously, I talked to Grinch uh, here and there, but it was mainly uh, Coach Odom. That's awesome. So question on what was it like when Lincoln left and the staff left? Obviously, Odom wasn't here. Did you ever consider potentially transferring out? Or were you just like, no, Oklahoma's home. This is where I want to be. It's not even in consideration. Well, I mean, there's always thoughts that go through your head. You know, I, I obviously I love it here, and I I didn't I didn't want to leave, but I, I was so skeptical on uh, you know what would happen. It was kind of there's always that sense of like you never really know what the future can hold. 
But uh, the second Coach Venables was hired, I, I knew I was staying here. I knew this is the place I wanted to be. And um, it was something that it's a no brainer, pretty much. Yeah, looking at all the elite linebackers that Ted Roof and uh, Brent Venables have put into the league, um, that's got to be that's that's got to be uh, awesome. Like you know, just a good feeling for you knowing that you know you potentially have that shot as well. And I think a lot of people, um, including myself, are projecting you know you to be not if the best, but one of the top two linebackers on the team this year. Um, and you know, after this year, probably the best linebacker on the team. So uh, you definitely got that talent and a lot of people uh, are excited to watch you. I think you probably would have started last year if it wasn't for that injury, which, you know, give us a little more insight into that. Like, what was it like coming back from an injury? Um, and I, I can't remember what, what it was, but. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, uh, I I dislocated my elbow that second game. I just took a hit. It just kind of got me in the the right place. You know, it just kind of knocked it out. It wasn't anything bad. And I, I bounced back. I was good for that Texas game. But, um, you know, just speaking on what you said earlier about, like, being the best linebacker, honestly, like, our our room is so deep that I think all of us are going to stand out years. I mean, we've put in so much hard work. And that, uh, you know, it's been such a good summer for all of us, like, me and David have we compete every day. We we've been pushing each other, you know, every single rep. And then uh the young guys are standing out too. Jaron, Kip, and Kobe have all been awesome. They've all been pushing each other. And um, you know, the older guys like uh Deshaun White and T D Roof have really just been leading us. You know, they're they're great leaders. They they have the experience. And uh, you know, we come together and we make a, a really good room. And uh, you know, it's been a lot of uh hard work from all of us. Uh every single player is coming for the extra film. We're always up there, you know, picking Coach Roof's head. And, um, you know, I think we're going to be a really great just team and a great room. And uh, where I think we're going to be that backbone of the defense this year, for sure, all of us. Yeah, so you kind of alluded to it. And I believe it's three freshmen on the team this year uh, for the mm -hmm. linebackers. You got Jaron Kanak, Kip Lewis, and Kobe McKenzie. Um, so I, I know you said that you wanted to potentially take a, uh, higher leadership role within this team. So what does that look like for you leading these young freshmen, being a mentor to them, uh, and teaching them how to play the game, how to go about themselves, uh, in the media on and off the field, um, so that, you know, they're equipped to, uh, go out there and be the best of them that they can be on and off the field. Yeah, I try. I definitely try to help the the young, the young cats. I mean, I, I work out with Jaron, and uh, he's a he's a real strong guy. But uh, you know, I, I try and just tell them stuff that I've learned. You know, especially the fall camp coming up, trying to just give them tips. You know, trying to help them out, and they know, like, whenever they need, I'm there. Like, you know, I hang out with them all the time. Like, we're we're close friends, and um, it's kind of just not so much being as a boss, but as a teammate. And that's just definitely been something that's been great. Like. We all hold each other accountable. We've all had each other's backs. And, uh, you know, I just want to, I like, I will, we all welcome them in as soon as they got on campus, just like how I was when I stepped on campus. And it just built a very strong unit for sure. Yeah. So Jaron Kanak has been uh, probably one of the more talked about recruits this 2022 class. It seems like everybody is really excited about him. Um, and he's swole. He's big. What is that like when you guys go into the weight room and you guys are lifting with each other? Do you guys have a little bit of competition there? Is it hard to keep up with him? Well, I mean, uh, I don't, he's not really human when it comes to that type of stuff. I, I don't know. Uh, I call him Ivan Drago because he was literally built in a lab. And, uh, you know, it, it's a little, you know, he can throw some weight up. So it definitely pushes me. I'm like, dang, how, how does he do that? But, uh, you know, he's, he's awesome. He's definitely been, it's been great to have him. He def, he's going to be a, definitely a great sooner for sure. Yeah, I can't wait to see him uh, hit the field. I'm 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 kind of weary if we're going to see the freshman this year, just because uh, watching Brent Venables at his time here at OU and Clemson, it doesn't seem like he really plays freshmen all that much. It seems like he would rather them get some experience. And so I kind of wonder how often they're going to play. I mean, I know he's going to play the best guy at that position, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm definitely excited to see them. And I think the future is bright in that linebacker room. So, oh, absolutely. It just it all comes out like. Especially in Coach Venable's defense, it just comes whoever's most prepared, whoever's the guy's playing the most work, and he uh, he recognizes that. And so, it, I mean, every, every spot's pretty much open, man. Whoever whoever works for it can get it. Yeah. So let's talk about Venables real quick. So 
Um, you know, we've heard the things about Lincoln Riley, whether they're true or not. Um, but Venables, he's kind of that guy where uh, he's a legacy OU guy. Um, OU people love him. What is what is it like um, being coached by Brent Venables? Uh, it, it seems like he's really trying to develop you guys, not only to just be great football players, but you know, just great men off the field as well in everything that you do. And so what, what impact has that made on your life so far with him being there at the university? Yeah. Well, I mean, coach Venable's philosophy is definitely the most important thing to him is graduation, which is definitely huge. And um, he's had a big emphasis on, you know, go, attending class, being present, you know, kind of just experiencing college, which, um, you know, he knows that's a big part of our life where we're going to change a lot. And uh, he wants to have that impact where he can build us into better men. And then he knows when you build a great man, you'll be a great football player. And so that's just one of his big philosophies. And he's definitely changed me and my mentality on just how my outlook on life and everything I do and everything has its purpose. And that's just been one main, one main thing that I can take out of it. Yeah. So with uh, Brent Venables and the staff, does that kind of change your philosophy a little bit? Um, and, and I know NIL might play a factor into this, and I guess we can kind of lead into that a little bit. How does Brent Venables being here um, in NIL impact you to maybe stay? Like, does that make you want to stay for four years and graduate? Because with NIL now, you can, frankly, survive in college, right? You know, you can live comfortably. Or is it just, no, hey, like when I get that opportunity, if I'm a first or second rounder, third rounder, I'm going to go. I think it, uh, I think it's just right now it's early to tell. And, um, you know, obviously, uh, if I'm a first and second rounder, like it's hard, it's hard to make that decision. That's something that's going to be kind of brought up when I'm there. But, um, I don't think coach Venables and NIL are like a direct uh, correlation for each other. I think coach Venables, he's gonna, I'm going to increase my play because coach Venables is here. And I think if I do that, then the NIL opportunities will definitely make themselves more present. And so I, I, but there's not a direct correlation. You know what I'm saying? Like coach Venable isn't going to be the reason why I get NIL deals. It's going to be, he's making great football players. We're winning games and we're doing our thing. And then the NIL will come second, which is how it should be. Yeah, I guess uh, I might've worded that wrong. I guess it's uh, how does Brent Venables uh, developing you as a player make you want to stay for four years and then NIL mm -hmm. on the secondary factor, you know, with uh, being able to make some money. Cause I guess you can look at it. Um, and we saw this in the MLB draft. Some guys were getting drafted, but they're making more money on NIL than they are yeah. on their MLB contracts. So it makes more sense for them to stay in college a little bit longer and develop. Um, and I think we're probably made, I, I, I just my opinion and, you can chime in on this. I think we're probably going to see a lot of football players do that now where they stay in college uh, longer because if they're not projected to be a second, third, you know, whatever pick, um, you know, they're probably making more money at college. And so it makes more sense for them to stay and develop. And I think that helps the NFL as well because then they're getting more tenured guys, but no, I don't absolutely. know what you think I, about that. I definitely think there's going to be a, that kind of trend for sure. Yeah. So talking on, on NIL a little bit, um, do you have any NIL deals? Uh, I have a few. I mean, I'm trying to keep it light. I don't want to overwhelm myself. But, um, you know, I'm working with uh, Gabe Iker and Dusty on uh, that um, Strengthening Oklahoma. And I think that's going to be a really great, uh, really great subscription thing that we're going to have going on there. And it's going to be definitely something for the fans to get involved with. It's awesome. And then I'm working with, um, you know, the Players Lounge on an NFT that's going to be coming out soon. And that's another great opportunity to just interact with us and kind of, you know, support us and, you know, we can give back and kind of interact with the fans in any way possible. Yeah. So you talked about that first one with Iker um, and Dusty. Uh, give them a little bit more insight onto what that, what that is uh, and, you know, where they can go to sign up for that. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, there's going to be a lot more coming out soon once we get closer to the season. But, uh, you know, I don't want to give out too much, but pretty much it's going to be a place where uh, you're going to have access to, you know, more player content, more uh, more personal one-on-one -on -one stuff, and uh, just where you can learn more about who we are as players and uh, just kind of where we can, you know, share our stories, share our, our thoughts, you know, and answer uh, questions from the fans, which is also a good, good part in that. All right. So I like to ask this question for everybody, but if you could have any NIL deal with any food restaurant in Norman, 
or on campus, where would it be? Oh, uh, that's hard. But um, honestly, my me and my roommate's go-to place is Valer. I don't know why. Like we love the pizza and wings there. It's definitely like a go-to. And uh, so probably Valer, uh, definitely one of our favorite places to eat. All right. Well, there you go. Hey, Valer, if you guys hear this, you guys need to give Danny Stutzman his own pizza. <laughs> Name it after him. Give him his own pizza. So. Yeah, we can work something out. The DMs are always open. You know, actually, any place in Campus Corner, the DMs are always open for sure. All right, awesome. Well, uh, just a couple more questions before I let you go. But if you had to give any advice to just anybody out there, whether they're in high school um, or you know wherever, um, and they're looking to potentially um, you know be the next great linebacker, what advice would you give them? I mean, really, I, I, mean, I just worked uh, a youth camp and just talked about this, but um, kind of, it doesn't, it looks so far away. Like, you know, when you see us on TV or you see us playing, it's like, we're these big guys that have done so much, but really like, I was just in those shoes. I was just that freshman going into high school football, just like nervous, don't know what to expect, but kind of just, it's all about hard work and commitment. And, um, you know, you, whatever you put in is what you're going to get out of it. And so just kind of, you know, it's all about hard work. Stay on top of your grades is another thing I can say. And just being committed to the game and just be, being committed to your life. You know, it's easy just to stay in, get distracted about stuff. But if you're focused on football and you're focused on your grades and you're focused on the stuff that matters, it's definitely going to pay off in the future for you. All right. There you go, future generation. You heard it from Danny Stutzman himself. All right. Uh, <laughs> So um, I know we kind of talked about this at the beginning. I asked Ethan this question, uh, but I want to ask you, um, and, and if you don't have uh, one available right away, that's fine. But, uh, you know, what's your favorite scripture um, and why? If you don't know it off the top of your head, that's fine. Uh, just give us maybe a little bit of summary about your faith. Well, um, my favorite is Joshua 1.9. And um, kind of story behind that is, um, you know, Brian Mead last year, he was um, an older guy. Uh, you know, he was a great, a great person. Uh, he showed up, actually was just at his wedding, but uh, he kind of showed me the ways. He was one of the guys when I walked in that room, he kind of just took me under his wing and uh, he showed me a lot on the football side and on like the biblical side of it too. And, uh, before, you know, he came and he's like, yo, like you want to pray with me before the games? And, uh, you know, we would run out there and uh, we'd be on the 25 yard line on the, the North end zone. And uh, we, he'd, he'd always pray. And he'd pray Joshua one nine and he prayed over us and it, it's all, it was on his shoes. It was everywhere. And I think I've just kind of, that's kind of turned into my favorite verse and it's just been, you know, it's just, it's stuck with me, the message he's taught me and what he's taught me. All right. So is there one thing, anything you want to say to Sooner Nation before I let you go? Just, Keep keep supporting us. Uh, you know, we might not always reply, might not always be available because we're so busy. But you know, we see it and uh, we do appreciate it. And you guys mean the world to us. You know, we wouldn't be who we are without you guys. And uh, you know, just boomer sooner. Boomer sooner. 